Hey guys, this is Jennifer from Shooter's Mindset, and we are live with episode 438. We've got our co-hosts with us. Greg, how's it going? It's going good. How about y'all? Doing well. You had a match this weekend, didn't you? Yep, yep. I hosted my little NRL 22 last weekend. That's fun. We we didn't get to it, but we're going to get to the next one, I think. Registration's Thanks. open. All right. Well, I'm, not that, I'm not that proactive. It's not the week of yet. You know me. I'm always like last minute. Squeeze me in there. I could always just sign you up. Didn't I do that before? And you're like, oh, I guess yeah. this weekend. <laughs> Way to sign up. I'm already signed up. Uh, our other co-host, Corey, how's it going? I'm tired, Jen. I'm pretty tired. <laughs> How many matches did you shoot this weekend? Uh, last week at none, I went fishing and a boat motor died and I got to paddle, but the weekend before I shot a match. So I'm good. You had to paddle. Do you have video? Yeah. I have a picture of me pulling the boat off, like from the dock, like a donkey. And it was pretty fun. You should post that so I can like <laughs> it. That totally needs to get posted. All right, and our guest of the hour this week, we have none other than Justin Watts. How's it going, Justin? The lady's pet and a man's regret. That's me. <laughs> I, I fully expect there to be a, a lively comments section this week. So, Oh, I'm sure. I, I'm sure there'll I be have no doubt. Y'all ask all your questions in the live, and we'll ask Justin live whatever you ask him. So for anybody that doesn't know you, um, I know you've been on the show before and you're, you know, pretty heavy in precision rifles. So most people know you, but if somebody doesn't know you, can you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into shooting and kind of what you do. Uh, yes. My name is Justin Watts. Um, I own Ballad Board Precision and um, I'm also uh, the J in JTAC, uh, Precision Rifle Training. Uh, I've got another uh, couple of businesses as well. Um, but, um, uh, I got into shooting, uh, in the army. Um, and when I got out, uh, started doing training, opened up my range and, uh, some PRS shooters started coming out to my range to train. And, uh, and that's kind of how I got into it. And now I am, uh, self-proclaimed, uh, the best shooting instructor in the industry, um, backed up by fact. Um, so that's what i do for a living so so how long have you been shooting 20 years close to it about 17 years i mean you don't have that much experience then so no <laughs> nah. not a lot so um why are you the seventh best prs competitor in oklahoma mm, i don't think seventh best that's <laughs> that's not accurate i will uh yeah, you know, people, I got a whole wall. I got a wall of shame at my range that when people tend to think they're better than me. I don't compete a lot anymore. Um, and y'all are welcome because of it. Um, I wouldn't say seventh best. Um, there's, there's, there's definitely some better shooters than me in Oklahoma, but seventh, um, no. I have a wall of shame. If anybody wants to put some money up and, uh, and, and they'll, they'll have to sign it and go on the wall of shame. So. Well, how many internet uh, snipers have come and shot with you? I know, you know, it's all the time. Oh, I could make that shot. I could do this. And people will say, well, oh, you're my a boy. lot, a lot. Yeah. Uh, so I had some a guy come down from, um, we went, so JTAC, uh, we went to Wisconsin, did a four day class with the Wisconsin guys. And uh, one of them came back and trained with me and, and uh, he saw my, you know, wall of shame. And he's at the end of the class. I said, man, do you have anything else? He goes, yeah, I got a question. He said, um, how bad do you want to lose a $5 bill or how bad do you want to lose a dollar bill? And I said, all right, let's do it. And so we had a shoot off and he lost and he said, okay, okay, double or nothing. And so now it's for $2 and he lost again. And this time he's like, okay, $5 bill, $5 bill. And he lost a third time. And so he, I signed that and put it up on the wall. And then one of his buddies came back uh, down from Wisconsin to train with me about a month later. And he said, Hey, I want to, I want to 
I want to bet you that $5 bill. And so Richard bet me a $5 bill. And I said, man, here's the problem. Like, we're going to have to use your gun because I don't have my gun. And, um, and I said, but, um, you know, the stipulation was no Kestrel. You had to make a wind call just on your own. And he ended up losing uh, a $5 bill as well. And so there's a bunch of people. Eric Savannah bet me I couldn't hit a golf ball at 300 yards with one shot. Um, and, again, used his rifle because um, I didn't have mine. And uh, he lost a $20 bill. Uh, so it's signed on my wall and I just got a whole wall just decorated of, I only take serious stuff serious when, when something's, you know, at stake and I don't, uh, I don't compete a lot. I usually shoot about three matches a year now, um, because I do mostly training and I've got some other businesses that require a lot of my time and I have, I'm a, you know, single dad. So, um, I, I have a lot of other priorities. I don't, shoot a lot of matches but i mean i always go in the finale with a you know 290 something plus and you know i don't take the shooting part as serious as some do um i take the training i like taking my students uh and and watching my students go out there and you know be the best in their region or you know win prs bullets um it, that brings me more joy than my own trophy. I got too many trophies. I mean, I can't even have them all in the same room. So that is a first world problem. First world problem. Can't talk. Yeah. Yeah. Some in the range, some are at the, like in my living room, some are in my, my shooting room, some are in the shed. I mean, all those big checks, you know, I've, those are on the wall. Some of them are in the corner. I mean, at some point we, we wanted to do like a JTAC photo where all the instructors brought all their trophies and, and, put them together for one picture and everybody's like dude i can't haul all those like i couldn't even fit all those in my truck so <laughs> yeah it was a good idea but we would need a semi so tell us a little bit about foul bore um for anybody that doesn't know tell us kind of what all it is and then what matches are you hosting there so foul bore precision is the longest and largest gun range in the state of oklahoma uh we have targets out to a mile uh, we have pistol and carbine bays. Um, um, we host regional center fire and uh, rim fire matches uh, once a month. And then I host two uh, national PRS matches a year, which is the Oki Showdown, which is my May match. And then we do something really unique called Silent Night, which is a, uh, gosh, you're going to have to bear with me for a minute. I got braces and I have a little bit of a lisp. <laughs> um Silent Night is a suppressor only night match. It's shot in complete darkness. Uh, the same rifle that you would use for a daytime match. You don't need night vision or anything like that. The targets are illuminated. Um, so the positions you shoot from are dark. Um, and I light the targets up. So it's a it's a really different match. It's really cool. Um, everybody's got glow sticks all over them. And it looks like a rave going on at night out there. It's pretty cool. That sounds really cool. I need to come to that. I, I don't know if I want to come back to foul board though, because last time I was there, it was very, very cold. Yeah. You it won't be cold in May and August. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not going to be cold. Cold is not used to describe Oklahoma, but for like two months out of the year. So I heard yeah. you were spraying for those stickers too. I heard you got rid of yeah, them. Yeah, we we did. Yeah. It's expensive. It's expensive to spray for them things, but you can kill them. I'm pretty sure that I now have stickers in my backyard from your stickers because I'm pretty sure that I brought so many of them home with me. Um, it's possible. They germinated in my backyard. It's definitely possible, but you can kill them. It's expensive. The uh, the chemical um, that we spray, it's called Reslon, the pre-emergent, and it's about $350 for uh, a bottle, and that does about five acres, so... Yeah, it's very expensive. Yeah, I need to get some of that and share with my neighbors so that it doesn't come back from them. <laughs> yeah. Someone had asked uh, in the comments on your post about my bolt at uh, yeah, Jared. Baltimore. Yeah, so the 2020 finale, PRS finale, was at Balboa. And yeah. 
was like nice the day that we arrived and then it is like hell but the opposite of hell because it was like freezing cold wind it's the only time I've ever dialed wind into my scope and just left it like I mean like 0.8 mils just dialed it in and left it for every stage because it was so windy yeah and uh, at the end the match director you know that mean old Justin Watts was like if I can see the targets you're gonna shoot them I don't want to hear any complaining and so we got down the lady squad we got down to the the very last stage which arguably all day we had been able to see them all so we get done the very last stage and it was off of a car and there was a car out there that had four targets around it and uh it got so bad that like you legitimately couldn't see them and we're all on glass like you like I don't know how ROs would even see the targets and so we called you over and I was the next shooter so I had put my gun down while we were discussing and uh, we came up with a plan because you couldn't see all of the targets you came up with a plan that wasn't going to alter anything and so I go I finally get to go shoot and they say engage and I go and I put my gun on the on the hood of the car and I get behind it and I find my target and I go and the bolt would not move and I was like what what's going on and I ended up having to come off the gun and like punch it to get it to go because it froze open it was so cold yeah you probably had some uh grease or something or some kind of lubrication on your bolt CLP or something that will freeze well it was actively snowing so I think it got snow in it (laughs) it probably did it It was, was it was not it was not a great time yeah, sure. that's why you couldn't see the targets because it was like whited out. But I ended up yeah. cleaning the stage, so pretty sure. Um, yeah, Re- like I said earlier, Regina Milkovich, uh, she's probably still not talking to me to this day over that. So she, her fingers were so cold. She's like, I literally have frostbite, and we're still shooting. I'm like, yeah, sorry. There were a lot of guys. That, that- it was if it wasn't the finale, I would have called it. But it was the finale. I mean, yeah, and, and and not everybody had shot the same course fire, so. I just had to keep going. So push through it. So you've gotten into MMA recently. Tell us about some yes. of your bouts. What's about? About a match, a fight. Oh, bout, gotcha. Yeah. Tell us about some yeah. of those, and when is your next big one? Man, I don't know. Um, so uh, I got into which sounds crazy. I I got into doing MMA um, because my body can't take jujitsu anymore uh competition which sounds um Go ridiculous <laughs> but what uh you can control the fight from your feet you, you you can control the pace with a jab you know you can you, you can stay on your feet you kind of control the pace of the fight a little bit better uh and, and you're fighting one person whereas if you go to a, a jujitsu tournament like an ibjjf or an agf or something like that you may be grappling eight or 10 guys in a day and my body cannot physically take that anymore i mean i left the dallas open um in 2022 with two gold medals around my neck and i couldn't even take my clothes off i couldn't move i had to go to the hospital (laughs) i mean it's like what did i win here nothing (laughs) nobody nobody wins in a fight right so um i I got into uh, to MMA um, because I figured either I'll do a super fights, which are like um, just a uh, single, you know, grappling matches, uh, one person, one and done, either win or lose, um, or MMA uh, in a cage because my body can take that. I can't do it six or seven times in a day. I can do it once a day. Um, I'm just get getting too old, and um, you know, I just. I just wanted to be better. And uh, since I've gotten braces, you know, I was worried about, you know, getting in the cage, but they made me uh, a special mouthpiece um, that's supposed to protect my braces. And I messaged the um, the fight promoter Summer um, this morning about it. And he said that she thought it didn't see anything in the rules where I couldn't fight with braces. So as long as my, you know, braces were covered. Um, so. I think uh, we're just kind of. I'm just kind of waiting to see something that opens up, and and then I'll take it and get in the cage. So we'll see. Um, the last one ended up 
not getting paired up with the, the same guy that I was supposed to just because we were so far apart on weight and um, uh, ended up getting paired up, paired up with another guy and it ended up getting the win. And, um, and I was like, well, that's, that's going to be my, you know, I'm done. And now I'm like, well, you know, I can do it again, obviously. Kind of like, you know, winning a golden bullet, you know, and it's like, you should stop. There's nowhere to go but downhill, you know. And it's like, well, I can maybe win another one. And then, and then what, you know, it's, I, I should probably stop. But I don't know. I like just keep pushing myself and, and I enjoy it. And I don't know. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. How old are you? 35. Okay. So like about, I would say four years ago, like that I had to stop doing judo because of exactly what you're talking about. Like Monday through Thursday practice, Thursday, I would have to roll out of bed sideways and put my feet down to stand up. Yeah. It ain't, it ain't worth it. I promise you, dude. Man, so I'm already like that. <laughs> I'm already like that, but you know, um, it takes me a while to get warmed up, but you know, I do wrestling, jujitsu and MMA. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's, I like it. Um, do I want to, I mean, I can go spar, I can go train grapple for two hours. No problem. Yep. Um, and, and I, I'm fine. I, you know, I, I it's, it's, it's going to jujitsu tournaments that get me. Cause like, anybody who's ever done any kind of like grappling or sparring or anything like that, like practice is one thing training. Mm -hmm. But when, when, when there's like gold on the line, like they're trying to tear your limbs from your body. Like they're oh, giving yeah, you, it. they're trying to kill you. And so, um, man, you, you do that six, five, six, seven, eight, nine times in a day. Yeah. My body yeah. just can't take that anymore. So I know it sounds, it may be, it may be nonsense when I say like, MMA is better just because I can control the pace, you know, uh, once you hit the ground, like, you know, it's, there's no controlling the pace at that point, really, uh, unless you're good at wrestling um, and staying in control, but it, it may be stupid and it may just be in my head, but I feel like my body takes less damage doing that than it does grappling for, you know, seven or eight guys in a tournament. I'll agree with you that, the vast majority of tournaments I went to, I felt way worse than a week of practice. Yeah. But at a certain point, like you're, you can still progress in all of this, but man, the recovery after the tournament, it does not get any faster. Man, you know, I always like, sometimes I feel like, you know, I'm getting too old. And then like one of my coaches, Tyson Southern, you know, uh, mm -hmm. if anybody follows uh, Tyson Southern, he, he's just a freaking animal. And, you know, he's 40, maybe yeah. older. I think he's at least 40. And, like, man, he, he makes it kind of hard to, to say, oh, I'm too old, you know, because, I mean, he just goes out there and just does it. And any fight doesn't matter. He'll get in the cage. He'll get in the boxing ring. He'll get on the jujitsu mat. Like, he, he doesn't care. He'll fight anybody, anytime. He's always ready to go. And, I mean, it's kind of it's like stop being a little bitch, Justin. You know, when I, <laughs> when I don't want to get out of bed or I don't want to go train, you know, and I don't know. Um, I always, anytime I don't want to go train, uh, you know, there's an old saying, um, somewhere out there he is training while I am not. And when we yeah. meet, he will win. And I always, due to that, I mean, I, Anytime I think like I'm too tired to go lift weights or go to the gym or I'm too tired to go spar, I'm too tired to go train. I just tell myself like, you just go like the fact that you're trying to convince yourself not to go means you have to go. And for sure. Yeah. And I've got some really good coaches. I train with the guys at alpha MMA. I train with the guys at the forge in, in Oklahoma city. Um, you know, I'll go to a couple different gyms, but my main gym is as alpha MMA and those guys over there, like, there's just some killers man and, and like i don't know they push me to be better and and uh you know if i want to do private training like they'll they'll make time in their in their their week to because my schedule is crazy so a lot of times you know um i have to like do private training um and yeah. like they'll make time for me and and um and you know you know 
I spend as much time as I can in the gym, um, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the in MMA gym or in the like weightlifting gym, just trying to stay in good shape. And I think it's better for my yeah. mental health and physical health to, to stay. Oh, I agree with that. And if it keeps you motivated, like then keep doing it. Um, yeah. But anyways, tell us about Thud Life, other business. So Thud Life Outdoors, that's my, uh, that's my, shoot, my hunting outfitter. Um, uh, we, we do deer, ducks, turkey, um, uh, wild ho- thermal hog hunts. Um, we've got a, we've got a hunting lodge on a 32 acre lake. Um, mm-hmm. so we've got, I've got a lot of land, uh, leased and, you know, basically like, uh, I would say most weekends of the year, um, I've got hunters, uh, whether it's ducks or deer, or turkey, I've got turkey season's coming up here in two weeks and yeah. i've got hunters booked out so okay how's the turkey season looking for y'all man it's good yeah good? It, 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 it's okay. looking good yeah. I, yeah i've got some big toms and uh I, I you know my my hunters will be if they can't kill a turkey man they they gotta find something else to do um, <laughs> okay is that mostly so. habitat or is that predator control that you're doing getting the turkeys because i know the southeast is having issues with both so man I, we hunt turkeys just to uh what do you mean like the per turkey population going down yeah yeah so if you've got a healthy population right it, it's yeah. more than likely one or the other or both but i know the southeast is struggling in general right now because they basically the population blew up predators came in it kind of rebounded a little bit but i so, know you do a lot of coyote hunting we we kill a lot of coyotes, uh, not as many as uh, again, man. If if you if you if you want to uh, if you love something and you want to hate it, make it your job. Um, so uh, <laughs> shooting, yeah, I used true. to love to shoot matches. Um, I used to love to shoot. I used to love to hunt, man. And then I took all those things and made them my job. And uh, and yeah, so I don't I don't hunt as much as I used. We used to hunt like coyote tournaments and stuff and we kill some coyotes but um um man so when you get like you said you get a, a healthy population you, your predators grow it's an ecosystem um and but i would say predators are not really not not really coyotes and bobcats are the main concern for turkeys the main concern is wild hogs and the fact that nobody coon hunts anymore you just don't yeah when i was a kid every every night on a back road you'd, you'd see coon hunters and nobody does that anymore well those coons they get in their their nest and then you know the hogs mm-hmm. will find their nest and and they eat the eggs and that's what happens to the quail i think here in oklahoma we used to have lots of quail now you don't see much quail and i mean anything that does survive yeah they're they have to worry about coyotes and 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 bobcats but i think the biggest problem is the wild pigs and the and the raccoons and stuff skunks yeah and you've been putting a hurting on the pigs yeah, we killed. Yeah. <laughs> What's y'all's biggest one so far? Man, the biggest, uh, the biggest one I weighed. I mean, we had to kill some big yeah. ones. The biggest one I weighed is we entered that. Uh, it's like a, uh, two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollar uh, Wise County uh, Hog Tournament in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we entered that. It's five hundred bucks per team, and uh, and we killed a two ninety two, and. Uh, I was like, man, if it's not over 300, we're not even going to take it down there. Cause, and, yeah. and I think three, three twelve or something won it. But, um, yeah. I mean, we, we killed some big ones. Uh, we just kill a lot. I just kill a lot of pigs. I get that thermal drone up in the air and especially right now, the, the leaves haven't started growing back on the trees a lot. Um, yep. and there's not a lot of canopy, so there's nowhere for, for them to hide. And when I get that drone up in the air, it's, it's just it's game over. Like they they can't oh, yeah. hide. <laughs> oh, and yeah. I put my I put my AirPods in, and I you know I can you know either myself or one of my guides will use the drone and guide us in. You know, basically an eye in the sky will yep. guide us right into the pigs, and and we can just as long as my shooters can shoot, we'll kill a bunch. Can y'all use drones? It's only for pigs, right? Can y'all you can't use it for coyotes or anything like that. <laughs> Fair next enough. question okay <laughs> first off lower your voice um, <laughs> no, I, don't, yeah. I don't know 
Uh, I'm not going to ask. So along the lines of hunting, I'm sure you get a lot of guys that come in. Um, and this is kind of a loaded question because of who you are, but like, do you think precision rifle competition is valuable for hunters? Because we yeah. get it, we get the Absolutely. reply back all the time. Like there's X million hunters buying X million rounds of ammo. And there's like 5,000 PRS members. Why does yeah. PRS matter? And that's kind of where that question comes from. Man, I'm in the right. I mean, it's like yeah. when, you know, I'm a, I'm a loophole shooter. Um, and, you know, complain, we complain about where the windage mark is on the loophole. And, you know, the PRS shooters don't like it. And loophole said, you know, hey, what, when you spend $6 billion a year, like the military does, and we'll give a shit about where you put the windage mark. <laughs> it, it's like, yes, you know, it's, you know, us PRS shooters, we do matter. They do matter to companies. Obviously, these companies yeah. are supporting, you know, Loophole, Vortex, you know, all these companies, you know, obviously you have a rifle in the background, you know, you got a lot of sponsors. They do care, federal, they care about you, but federal doesn't care about you as much as they care about their, their hunters because they would go out of business. I oh, mean, for sure. I mean, you talk about millions of people versus 5,000 people or 20,000, yeah. however many shooters we have in the sport. I don't even know. But I mean, that's their number one, number one priority. When the ammo shortage hit, I mean, their main focus are NATO rounds, nine millimeter, two, two, three, you know, and then, and then your hunting calibers. Yeah. And then, and then your six, five Creed Moors, your six Creed and stuff like that. Like, yeah. Um, but to answer your question, yes. I, it, if you are if you are a hunter and you get into the sport it will make you better it it has in fact made me so good that i won't even hunt with a rifle anymore i bow hunt only because it just kind of <laughs> it just took the 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 fun out of it i mean when i can yeah. you know kill a, a buck at 750 yards he doesn't even know i'm there kind of defeats the purpose of hunting him fair enough i mean my i guess my thought is that if we could get through to 2%, right? Say, hey, you can do this in the other five months of the year when there's not anything to hunt other than nighttime hogs or you know coyotes all the time. I think legitimately you could really change hunting in a, in a positive way where you're not getting so many wounded animals. You're getting way better recovery, way better meat. Yeah. I, I just feel like it's such an easy sell for a guy to come out to a PRS match and improve yeah. his, even, his at club, even at club level. Yeah. Yeah. If, if they just could shunk, come and sh shot club matches and, or even just took a class and some training, you don't even sure. have to like, like go shoot competitively, like just training. I get a lot of guys who come down and, and do training with me and they're just trying to be better marksmen. They don't care about competing. They just want to be able to, to hit, kill stuff at distance or, 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 you know, hit targets at distance. Yeah, you guys have done a few hunter only classes, right? Yeah, we did. Um okay. yeah, we, we predominantly do um uh only um competition classes now, our advanced classes, um just because we all got okay. so busy and you know, we're in the negotiations with like government contracts as well. Um so we'll see where that goes. Um but a lot of people don't know this, but all the most all the JTAC instructors also do privates as well. So like if some people are intimidated by coming to a JTAC class, you know, because there's other people there. I, I I book classes. I have classes booked into June right now uh, for myself. Okay. I know Clay does. Clay, Clay does private lessons. So does Austin. I don't know if Bushman does. I, I, and Tate probably wouldn't. <laughs> he could. Yeah. He's just really busy. He could um, easily. Definitely. He could, oh, but... yeah, for sure he could. Um, but he probably wouldn't. But, I mean, no. uh, you know, if somebody wanted to, you know, train with us to, I, I i have training again booked into june right now so um yeah definitely Solid. Well, I, was, I would definitely take another class for you yeah man uh, i mean i'm gonna say i'm probably would i say i'm the best jtac shooter no no i am the best instructor and the J, jtac students are the best students out there it's not up for debate it's a fact i mean you you look at all of our students i mean even kale Harmon winning a golden golden bullet prior to that i mean for the last five years either a jtac instructor or a jtac student has won the golden bullet um and you know like kyle mccormick 
come out of nowhere, picked up his sixth place bullet this year. Um, and, you know, he's one of my students. I mean, he's trained JTAC. He trains with me privately. He trains with Clay some. I mean, like, when I had – we went to Wisconsin – uh, and did the the four day class. Uh, we t- we took forty students up there. Um, when they did the, it was like their top twenty five at the end of the season. Like twenty three of them were our students. I mean, it's 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 crazy. I mean, it, when you look at like the matches that have been won by one of our students, and 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 the, just the success level from like um, um, Brett uh files uh i think his best finish was like 79th place or something and he come and trained with me and then his next match he won top am and like 31st place or something i mean it was like a 50 percent jump or higher i mean it's it's definitely a shortcut it's a shortcut for sure and there was a point where us as jtac instructors were like hold on a second like now like we're we're getting beat it was like we got beat by our own students that had never remotely come close to winning a match you know and then all of a sudden for a few matches in a row that we're getting beat by our own students and we're like hold on a second here <laughs> like <laughs> maybe maybe we shouldn't be teaching this stuff and and we all decided like you know what like it is what it is if we can't beat them at their best you know then then we don't deserve to beat them so let's train them up and we'll see where this jtech thing jtech thing goes and uh, it's obviously you know taken off and now we've had to add another instructor austin bushman um and uh you know it's we just did one i don't know two weekends ago or something um and it was it was a really good class nice yeah i know a uh one of my good friends came up for i guess it was the last class maybe the one before that um heidi ba- heidi 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 i love heidi she is, is she... the sweetest thing ever yeah and she she she's awesome um mm-hmm. she uh she did really well um uh, her fundamentals like i normally have to like i normally have to ride people about the trigger pull and their fundamentals and i just i didn't have to say anything to heidi you know she is um, a she, great she, machine she is a machine yeah uh, and you know she's what like five foot and 100 pounds 50, 90 pounds i don't know she's tiny and lugging that 30 pound rifle around mm-hmm. I mean, yeah she uh yeah she did good she was she was one of our better students she's 100 percent spunk though yeah she's spunky <laughs> oh yeah without a doubt i love heidi I, th- yeah. I still think we need to get her on for a show that would be fun yeah that would be so much fun yeah she was super nice and i guess um you know, she um she took a lot from the class, um from 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 what she said. So I'm hoping that, you know, she she said that she you know I think she said she, she did very well in her region for her regional matches. And so I think she said either top ten or top five in her region. So I'm like, Heidi, you're gonna be winning these freaking your regional matches. So I'm I'm eager to see how that pans out. Well, I guess I'll find out on uh on saturday i hope she beats you oh dude th- there's no doubt okay she will absolutely yeah. whip my butt yeah I, that's awesome yeah she uh she has like she practices she's she's disciplined she goes to trainings you know she works on the fundamentals i went to the last minute eventually everything ends up inside of the truck hopefully the right gun for the right match and like you know i go bang a lot yeah um so, so we're about at the midpoint of the show remember if you're watching us live on facebook ask any questions you may have in the comment section of the video we'll ask it live on air other ways to catch us you can always check back on the shooter's mindset facebook page videos stay up there forever we usually upload all the podcast apps the night after the show then finally everything eventually ends up on the shooter's mindset youtube page so that's a great place to check out past app episodes um so back on the jtac stuff um do you guys have any new classes coming up anytime soon um places we do check them out we we do um we have a class in may may the 17th 18th i think um that one may be full <laughs> i'm not sure uh and then we have one in august and one in september and those i'm not they there may be spots available i'm not the the guy for that that's that's an austin question uh or a clay um question i don't know um 
definitely uh I, we definitely sold out this last class and i thought the may class was full i'm not entirely sure but just only when we find out <laughs> And then you Please also everybody. said you you guys added another instructor. Is yeah, we added Austin Bushman uh, this past year. Um, we added him just you know, you when you we actually cut down the we so we started with twenty students per class and then we cut it back because we felt like that was too many students. So we cut it back to sixteen, um, and you know, and then we have people waitlisted for classes like the UK guys. Um, that were wanting to come to this this current class you know we had to wait list them and i think they ended up signing up for the may class but we ended up bringing on austin bushman because obviously you know austin bushman is you know one of the best out there um he's an oki um and uh, we weren't sure you know because just because you can shoot doesn't mean you can teach and mm -hmm. so we brought him in like hey, let's see how this goes and his first class i mean he blew me away i mean like he just just followed our lead and just man he just never missed a beat like just came in and and just went with the flow and and uh he crushed it honestly and so this is our second this last one we did was our second class with austin with with bushman and it was uh it was a good class i mean he's very analytical um he he's you know good at taking his notes and and um and if he doesn't know something he'll just tell you i, I don't i don't know um he's just he's a he's a a good asset to the team. I love Austin Bishman. He cracks me up. Is he teaching how to um, get four rounds off in a short pass mover like he did at AG Cup? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. That's that's the worst case scenario thing, I think. <laughs> that way he kind of got uh he kind of got dared on that one. Yeah. He did three and then they were like, oh, but can you do four? Can he get four in? And he couldn't help himself and he did it. Yeah. It was impressive. <laughs> yeah. No, so, he, he's already impressive. I mean, he's a right handed guy. He got, you know, obviously he's got one fake eye and it's his dominant eye. So he learned to shoot uh, on his weak side and he shoots left handed and his non dominant eye. And I mean, he does it very well, obviously. So, Philip asked a question um, about where the classes are being held at. And also, like, 99.999% of people watching, they know what JTAC, what the JTAC classes are. But can you give, like, a like a quick, like, two-minute, what is JTAC, where are the classes, why do you want to take those classes versus other classes? Sorry, man. I got my ADHD. I stared at my biceps, and this <laughs> camera makes me look good. Dang it. Um, I wish my mirror looked like this at home. Went to the doctor. She said I was uh, morbidly a beast. I think is what she said. I don't know. My ears aren't that good. Um, uh, so the JTEC classes, um, we host some of them in Leedy at Clay's Range, and then we host some of them in uh, um, at my range. So we like flip flop back and forth. This next class is at my facility. Um, and what JTAC is, um, JTAC stands for Justin Tate, Austin, and Clay. And now it's Justin Tate, Austin, Austin, and Clay. Um, <laughs> but, which uh, nice. still works, I guess. But, nice. um, so basically, um, you know, a lot of us were doing training. And the reason we kind of started this JTAC thing is so we weren't really fighting over students. I mean, we're all, we're all Okies. Uh, we're all some of the best to ever do it. I mean, like I said, the golden bullet stayed in Oklahoma for four years straight. Uh, and before that, Matt Rousseau had it for, you know, two years in a row. Um, and instead of fighting over students, um, you know, we just thought, Hey, what if you just put all of us together and you have, you know, some of the best to ever do this in, you know, uh, one spot and we'll put a training program together and see where it goes. And so, we started doing, uh, we were going to do beginner and advanced that were like, you know, hunter, like hunter and then like a beginner and advanced. And we sell out these advanced classes so much that that's really all we've been booking. Um, and basically, you know, we, we like it that our students have 
already shot matches before. It's not required, but um, you definitely a lot of you. You definitely still learn a lot, but we like it when our students have you know shot before. Um, yeah. It so helps. it helps, right? So they kind of know yeah. like what we're talking about when you say a troop line or a TYL yeah. or you know you know making corrections on the clock and. Um, we we have a class curriculum. We sit spend about half a day in the classroom, and then we go to the range, and then we split up in groups, and and uh, you know we we cover you know wind and you know shooting off your belly, and then uh, and then we cover positional shooting. Um, two of us will cover positional shooting, and two of two instructors will cover you know something else, and then uh, we basically do that for half a day, and then um, and then on day two we kind of just flip flop and. And then uh, we'll do that, the same thing we did in the afternoon on day one. We'll do that the next morning, and then we'll break for lunch. We feed our students steaks, and then we go back to the range, and then we kind of do uh, – we have, like, different stations. Like, we can – you know, some students choose to do, like, a mini match. We'll get, like, a group of 10 guys that go shoot a match against each other and kind of real-life uh, coaching. Um and then we have some people that they strictly just want to focus on positional shooting um, to getting better at that. Mm-hmm. So they'll spend the rest of their class time doing that. And some people work, you know, just want to work wind and shooting off their belly. And um, so we kind of break up. So we have five instructors. We can break up and do different things. And it's been very successful. Yeah. So I want to just emphasize one small point that you glossed over. Clay's dad stakes aren't just stakes. Like they're yeah. top – Two to three stakes I've had in my life. They're yeah, really maybe. good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. T- Tina Tina is a great cook, but she is the second best cook in that household. Um, <laughs> Lynn, Lynn can definitely Lynn can definitely throw down. Um, no, I mean, I, I've had some some really good steaks, but I don't know if I've ever had one that good. I mean, that man can cook yeah. some steak. And his burgers, too. I mean, he just makes a really good burger. I'm always on a diet, so I love it when we go there because he always makes some sort of meat and something I can eat. So, yeah, I like it. So, what do you see is the key to growing long range competition? I feel like that is a loaded question because everyone's trying to grow the sport and everybody has different ideas. So, I always like to hear everyone's. Well, I mean, to me, and, you know, again, um, my opinion, varies but i think keeping you know a lot of people the expensive the, the cost of getting into this is is what really hinders a lot of people and the intimidation factor of matches um that's why my my club level matches you know my i have a, a really good like group of shooters that shoot my matches they're willing to help anybody um and I'll have people come out and they say, we just want to watch. And I'm like, no, don't, don't come watch, come shoot. Um, yes. And, and, and I will, I will pair you with some people and they will help you. And, and, um, you know, I, I have not raised my prices, uh, from the day I opened my range, uh, just as a public range period, my, my range fee is $30 a day, um, or 300 for the year. And, uh, I have not raised those prices, not $1 since the day I opened almost nine years ago. Um, my match fees have been the same. I haven't raised my PRS matches, my center fire regional matches, my rim fire matches. I've kept all my prices the same. I didn't up them. A lot of match directors have upped their prices and it just continues to climb. And, you know, I mean, shit, it's already hard enough to go. You're already spending a thousand bucks, no matter how you, you know, yeah. swing it to go to a two day match. It's, it's hard to do that. And that's why a lot of people back down, went back to the regional level um especially with ammo being hard to find people went back to the regional level um to shoot just just so it's affordable i mean i think i think growing the sport we gotta i mean loop old vortex a lot of these companies make uh affordable optics that like i mean you could take a you know a a less than a thousand dollar scope and 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 do just fine like you don't have to have a you know, absolutely. Night force attacker, or a tangent, or something. I mean, Loophole makes a, a cost efficient scope. Vortex makes cost efficient scopes. I mean, there's all these other you know scope companies out there that that you know um, Athlon Optics. 
stuff that make these scopes at an affordable price and and there's 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 real production rifles out there i mean you i don't want to get on the the topic that go ahead say it. I'll, me, that i'll grab one out of the closet justin say it <laughs> don't don't go pull out your five thousand dollar production rifle i don't want to see it um we talked about this no, on our last podcast yeah, it's and, a great point, though. There are real production rifles. There are real and production like, rifles out there, and there's real, like, affordable scopes that you can get into the sport. Yeah. And, and I mean, unfortunately, you're going to be competing even in production class against somebody shooting a custom rifle. Um, but you can still get into the sport and, and go shoot production. And Yeah, uh, and when you started, right, fixed 10 was still a thing, right? Now uh, yes. we have like one to 10 optics that, I mean, glass quality is unreal, like unbelievable yeah. compared to when we started. And yeah. you've got a seven to 35. You could probably get the five to 25 series now under a thousand and still have probably on par glass with what y'all started in the fixed 10. Probably better. Right. Probably better glass. Like, yeah. And you're shooting most of the time. 15 power maybe like it's not yeah. like you need 35 all the time no so uh i set mine at my loophole's got a mark at 17 and i, I leave it there <laughs> for the entire yeah. i don't ever touch that thing yep. um i don't think i ever touch my knob the entire match um i know some people do i don't um but i mean yeah it yeah i think growing the sport we got to have um we have to grow the sport right um so you know taking people under your wing get them to go shoot a match you know um because some guy at your range that's like a little nervous about it like you know talk you know talk them into going with you and uh just take them under your wing and hell let them shoot your rifle if you need to i mean um there used to be like an old clicky kind of mentality to this sport i thought when when i first got into it and i think i think that's pretty well gone away i mean the I th this is probably probably one of the best sports I've ever like been in as far as the people go. Everybody seems to be willing to help. And um, at the end of the day, I know Shannon K said it, you know, um, a few years ago and, and, you know, not every, you know, everybody agrees with stuff that Shannon says, but uh, I know me and Shannon have all you know, had our arguments, but he said no. at the finale, <laughs> Um, at the finale, he said, uh, if you judge your character on how you shoot a precision rifle, you have your priorities messed up. And that, that stuck with me. Um, and I tried to, cause I, I kind of was really driven at like, I have to be the best, I have to be the best. And, and I realized like, Hey, even if I don't win, like everybody still, uh, everybody still loves me and, and, uh, you know, they love my personality and, and, you know, when I do did win matches or when I do win a match, like that's just something better. But like, I have a really big name in this sport and it's not because I'm the best. I'm one of the best, but I'm not the best. There's a lot of better shooters out there than, than me. I have a big name because of my personality. And, um, and I hair think gel. that hair gel helps. Yeah. yeah. That's what I told Greg when we first started earlier. I was like, man, the last time I was on this podcast, I think the only thing that's changed is my hairline. Um, <laughs> which is fine. I'm getting older, but I don't care if they turn gray as long as they don't turn loose. So, yeah. Got, got, some gray, got some gray coming same. in. Oh, you can just brush it. Uh, uh, it's salt and pepper. I think it's, I think that's in right now. So, <laughs> so along with what Jen was asking, like growing the sport on your other side of business on side life, how do you grow hunting and specifically youth? Man. So I, I honestly, when we first started, I used Facebook, uh, like the marketing on Facebook, you can pay the, pay the yeah. thing and it'll boost your post. And, and we did that a lot. And, uh, I thought, well, even if it gets us one hunt, it's paid for itself. Um, and you know, I haven't done a lot of marketing for that. Um, I sponsored some, some fighters. I sponsored, um, you know, Tyson Southern, uh, just one of my coaches, I sponsored him. And another mm -hmm. fighter, uh, Kelvin Rayford, um, you know, I've sponsored some, you know, little league teams and stuff like that. And we've done a, a, a lot of sponsorship stuff and like giving stuff away and, and it's kind of got our name out there, but 
I haven't done a lot of advertising. I mean, I've done like a TV commercial or anything, or I, right. I think word of mouth has spread and, and, um, and then I just kind of let Facebook do its algorithm thing. And, and then we just, I don't know. Yeah. Money into I mean, it, and it gives me people. Yeah. Kids are always on the phone. So, I mean, if they see it, it's probably going to be on social media. These yeah. Days. And I, I knew, and I do cool shit too. So like, like if you watch some <laughs> of our videos, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> our drone videos and stuff like that, we do, I, I'll make some cool videos. Well, not me, obviously. Um, because I'm not the, <laughs> Thank I'm, not you. the I'm not the video guy, but um, I will have videos made, just doing cool stuff, and um, and you know it, it it's promoted itself, I guess. Yeah, a lot I don't of know the, that I want it to grow anymore. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the thermal, especially like video quality, like we were talking about with optics earlier, yeah. video and recording. Like, could you imagine using thermal twenty years ago, being able to say, yeah. I'm just going to live broadcast this from my phone. Like what? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember being in Iraq looking through thermals, you know, and thinking like, this is the craziest shit I've ever like seen in my entire <laughs> life. And then, you know, you come back and, and, you know, I get back from, you know, being in the military, being overseas and you're like, Oh yeah. Like my uncle's got one of those. I'm like, no, there's no way. There's no way he's got one of those. Oh, yeah. Like, like this is, this is like a, you know, classified thing that the military only owns. It's like, nah, like he, kills pigs with that i'm like what <laughs> and like hold on so that's when i got into thermals and that was probably like i don't know eight years ago probably and yeah. now we kill i mean i killed 200 and something in a month um it just me and tate and uh and glenn nuts and killed like 60 something in one night we actually ran out of ammo and glenn i have a video of it um glenn nuts and actually uh stabbed one <laughs> yeah, that man had a fixed yeah. bayonet um because he ran out of ammo and there were still pigs r r running around our feet it was it was crazy so what is your favorite animal to hunt flip tail <laughs> really yeah okay no. uh uh man i don't know guys in hunting duck. once you've once you've i don't know once you've hunted people man it's kind of hard to want to hunt anything else um probably ducks i think it's probably i burnt myself out on pigs and coyotes so probably ducks okay cool yeah uh i do have something i need to um tell you guys about a new a new app uh device that's coming out um it's actually clay's um it's called the jtac shot timer um and um it's it's in beta testing right now. Uh, I believe he said, you know, in the near future. He didn't want to put an exact date, but you know, maybe the next few weeks, hopefully. Um, but it is a shot timer that uh, you download in the um, the Google Play or the Apple Store, and uh, you you can attach it to you know um, your Google Watch or your Android Watch or your Apple Watch. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, or your Android Watch and um, and you Bluetooth it to your headset uh, or the watch can play the sound uh, by itself, but you, you shake it okay. and you can adjust the sensitivity. You shake it to start your timer. So, you know, when you have your rifle in your bag in your hand, you can, you can, you just, you can adjust the sensitivity so you can just barely bump it or you have to shake it really hard or, you know, kind of however you want to set it. And it'll, you can either hear this in your muffs or it'll play the sound from the watch, but it, huh. it's, it, it's, it'll give you a, you can set it. There's a bunch of different settings. You can set it to give you, you know, how, you know, if, if you want a 30 second, you know, um, reminder, if you want a 10 second countdown, if you want it to count down the entire time, uh, and, uh, and it'll play and you can, you can, it'll, you can record your own voice. Like, so you can hear yourself or, you know, he's going to you know, drop download packs where you can hear me like, Hey, dumbass, you got 10 seconds. Don't, don't break a bad shot. Um, so like you could have one of the JTAC instructors like talking to you in your headset the entire time, you know, coaching you, you know, I can say whatever I want, uh, you know, coaching you through, you know, I could, I could say like, Hey, you know, you got 10 seconds left, take it easy. You got two good shots left or, you know, whatever, whatever you would want them to say. And they'll, it'll play in your headset. And, um, he, he the app is, like I said, it's in beta testing. Clay has it. Clay has the app and it's working. Um, 
So hopefully he gets that. It'll be, I think, nineteen ninety nine in the App Store. Um, and uh, and it, again, you can record your own voice or you can use generic sounds like Siri or, um, you know, a, a British guy or whatever. Or you could, you know, download one of our voices um, and have one of us coaches talking to you the entire time. So uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool app. Again, it's called the JTAC Shot Timer, I think is what he is going to call it. So yeah. Pretty nifty. Yeah. Yeah. Or JTAC match timer or something like that. But yeah, pretty cool. So what are your thoughts on the current trend of painting rifles to personalize and differentiate them? What? I don't know. Just, you know, a unique um, paint job. Do you think it's important when going to the line? Is this so funny? Is this a joke? <laughs> yeah, yes, I do. Um, yeah, I think it's super important. I asked important. if you read these. <laughs> yeah, I think it's super important to make sure that you know which rifle is yours so that you don't mistakenly pick up someone else's and um, have your match go to uh, hell in a handbasket really fast. Um, I, I know from personal experience. Um, I was about to say, you sound like you have experience on that. Yeah, I have experience. Yeah. Well, when you have two twin rifles sitting next to each other and the only difference is the caliber it, it's kind of easy to get mixed up and at that point i think i was either in first or second um with two stages left and i cleaned the last stage so it really came down to that one and that one cost me seven or eight points i think because of that um having to go you know to the stage and and um you know, find out it wasn't my rifle, go find my own rifle, come back and have, you know, 20 something seconds to get, you know, a couple shots off, uh, on an easy clean stage. Um, you know, it was a big, big mistake for me, big, you know, but you know, we all have those mistakes and my yeah, rifle is I will say, obviously you fixed it. You will not it. make that mistake again. Well, <laughs> you say that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so oh, please tell me. Oh that. no. Yeah. <laughs> in Raton, uh, yeah. So I wrote on every side of the rifle, but the top of the cheek piece. So when I come at it from the back of the rifle, it still looks the same as one. And a guy had his set next to mine, and I picked his up again. My ADHD. I picked his rifle up, and I was getting ready to start the stage. And he looks and sees. He went to go dial his dope, and it was Justin Adamson. He went to dial his dope, and he's like where's my rifle at? And he sees mine sitting there. He's like, where's mine? He looks over and I've got a rifle in my hand. He's like, Hey, that's my rifle. And I was like, Holy shit. That is your rifle. And it, as soon as I looked over and saw the custom riding on the side of mine, I was like, Oh my gosh, you're an idiot. You did this twice. But, well, yeah. for those that don't know, tell them what your custom writing says. It says not Clay's rifle. <laughs> um, on the side because I picked up Clay's rifle and we had at the time identical rifles um and i picked up his and the only difference was mine was a six creed and his was a six bra and um yeah it was wasn't going to chamber if it would have been shooting the same calibers i wouldn't even have said anything i just would have just i just would have shot his rifle and he wouldn't have cared and but at that point like when i realized it was the wrong rifle i'd already dialed his turrets and you know it's says specifically in the rules like you cannot touch another competitor's turrets or it's an automatic match dq so i'm like am i disqualified can i restart and Tom Jacobs was like, no, you can't restart because the timer's already started. We can't start your time over. I'm like, well, am I disqualified? He's like, I don't know. Like, just go get your <laughs> rifle and 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 shoot what round you can, and we'll get George up here. And and you know, they obviously it wasn't intentional. Um, it wasn't you know malfeasance yeah. or anything. So they let me continue the match. But um, yeah, it definitely you know was not cool. So that was funny. So yeah. now we need to change the rules to say any intentional changing. <laughs> I mean, they by the rules they could have disqualified me, but George and Brian, you know, they're in the spirit of their matches. Yeah. Is, is if you haven't shot that Hornady match, it's super awesome. And I had the Hornady guys. I was shooting with the Hornady guys in my squad, and they were like, "Yeah, they're letting me get a reshoot," you know. And like it, it was my dumbass fault, you know. It's like, what's that saying? Like, um, you don't blame people for the road you're on; it's your own asphalt, you know kind of yeah. deal um yeah uh, 
I don't know if who to blame. Was it me that picked up Clay's rifle or Clay for setting his rifle next to mine? But I don't blame Clay. <laughs> yeah. Don't uh, park next to me anymore. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I my I'm like a squirrel brain, so you know, like if there was a truck next to mine, I would I would definitely go get in it that looked like mine. I mean, so well, honestly, probably didn't even have to be the same color, and I would try to get in it. I'm also a squirrel brain as hell. That's why that looks like that. Yeah, <laughs> nobody's gonna mistake that. You know, the, the, here's I'm, the I'm, cup. A, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real honest with you. I, I could probably mistake that. <laughs> I'm not going to say that it's a hundred percent at this point. So it's very possible that I could mistake that rifle. I, I, I have faith in you. Do well, we I'm going to do my best. Questions? Do we have any live questions? I don't know. I wouldn't even know how to read. Did some raccoons steal some T-1000s? I did actually. <laughs> yeah yeah I, my my flasher like i lost a flasher and i was like where is this flasher at and i went to go get it and it was gone yeah. and it, i knew that it got it had gotten knocked off of the target during the match but when i went out there right after the match was over or the next day it was gone and like i looked huh. everywhere i was like maybe it's got like a bullet like you know obviously a bullet's not gonna knock it off that far so i'm like walking yeah. around looking and there was raccoon tracks all over the berm <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, surely not. And you know, raccoons like shiny things. And I think yeah. what probably happened is it bumped it and it went off and it was like, Oh, I want that. And it took it. And and I don't know what it did with it, but I I yeah, I never recovered that. And of course, Magneto Speed being a great company was like, uh sure, like we'll warranty that. I don't <laughs> I, I mean honestly we just kind of have to at this point, like we just kind of have to warranty that. Just I don't know. They did. They sent me a new one, so that was cool of them. They didn't have to. Obviously, I don't think theft is, um, you know, in their warranty policy. But you know, they did it, and so that was cool. Honestly, they probably just like the story and like making fun of me for getting my um, T one thousand stolen. Ryan Hague gives me uh, shit about my T one thousands all the time, having spider webs in them. He's like, man, if I got to fight Black Widows to like rebuild your T one thousands, and I'm like, well, I just kind of leave them on, forget about them, and they work i mean i'll just buy another one ryan said next time a uh, raccoon seals one in order to get it warranted he, he need to provide video and evidence i don't know how, i mean i don't know how i would find it am i supposed to just fly my drone around and look in trees for a raccoon <laughs> playing with a flasher just put a <laughs> put a, put a uh, trail cam on the on the targets put a trail cam on my targets yep. yeah I, I mean, I still have T1000 on targets, um, so I haven't had it happen again. So this raccoon is obviously not a repeat offender. Um, uh, yeah, he or, took or, it back or, to the woods and went to eat it and decided it wasn't any good. Yeah, probably what happened. I don't know. He probably what happened is he, you know, like raccoons wash their food first. So he probably took it down to the pond. It was like, I'm going to rinse this thing off and it, <laughs> and it just died. And he was like, oh. Oh, no, no, no. no. I, I watched the review videos online. It's the most waterproof of all of them. The water didn't. Is go. it really? Mm -hmm. well, he might have dropped it in the pond. Then I'm gonna go check the water. <laughs> so, who knows? Are we good on the? I think so. <laughs> All right. I think we can wind it down to shout outs. We will start with Corey. Oh, uh, all right. We got we bed for solid bags. JP rifles, Federal, uh, Vortex, Planet Ford. Hunters HD Gold, Thunder Beast Arms, Texas Precision, Proof Research, and Ben Steger Pro Shop. All right, Greg, how about you? Wow, Corey went full influencer tonight. We're gonna go. <laughs> I told you right before we went on, I was doing something that wasn't it. <laughs> we'll, we'll say PDC Custom for rifle chassis bright enough that nobody tries to steal my guns, and Hunters HD Gold, so I can see my gun clearly. I got four percent battery on my phones. Talk fast. Do your shout outs. <laughs> we're winding it down. So, what do you got for shout out? Uh, I mean, shout out to my sponsors, uh, Loophold Impact, uh, Foundation Stocks, Hawkins, uh, Bartline Barrels, Ace Breaks, um, really right stuff. Um, I don't know. I'm probably forgetting one, honestly. Um, we bad. Uh, Clay's Cartridge Company. I got a bunch of them. Go check out my Facebook page. You can see them all. Um, 
Austin wanted me to plug CRB, uh, Custom Rifle Barrels. That's his new company. Hey, Obviously, yeah. I'm a bar line. I shoot bar line, but uh, that may change in the future. Yeah, Austin, my guy's feeling hurt, but, uh, you know, they reached out to me first, so. Uh, for the year, so I'm shooting a Bartlett this year, and then we'll switch it up maybe next year so I can support Austin and shoot a CRB. But uh, yeah, Austin is, you know, has bought a company. He's making barrels, and uh, if you want to go check him out, CRB Custom Rifle Barrels, and he also, you know, makes Ace Breaks. And they have 25 blanks in stock constantly, right? Dude, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I know he's cranking out as many as he can crank <laughs> out, so. Yeah, thank you. I think, I think Michael that. heard me say I had four percent. See, this is why I have Michael. If you don't have a Michael McDonald in your life, then I don't. I don't know what you're doing. Like, <laughs> or maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me that doesn't have my life together, and I need a Michael McDonald. But like, I have to have Michael. Like, I'm getting two teeth extracted tomorrow at the dentist, and guess who's taking me? Michael, because. I will be intoxicated and cannot drive, and he has to babysit me. Michael, so, yeah. if you could just message me about rates for uh, writing on Justin's forehead tomorrow, that'd be great. Thank you. Or video. Oh, he... <laughs> yeah, don't give him any ideas. Last time he took me, I was intoxicated, he took me to Sam's Club and just let me walk <laughs> around. I bought like $800 worth of shit. Like, I, I bought like four <laughs> boxes of like coffee. And I bought like some <laughs> hot chocolate bombs. I don't even like hot chocolate. No, like, he needs to do like I, I bought cup. I bought like a semi load of plastic cups. Just bought this <laughs> random. I was like, Michael, did you not see me just carrying random things to the counter with my debit card? <laughs> you just let me go. He's like, I thought you needed that stuff. I'm like, yeah, I needed eight thousand <laughs> plastic cups. Yeah, <laughs> and coffee for the next four years. He yeah, do I like that. the brothers did to their sister when she had teeth out and had all the medicine where they like recorded something all like off the radio, like that it was a zombie attack happening. <laughs> oh. radio, like, and, and probably, the, I'm probably not like, the panicking. one. She's like, oh my gosh. And they're like, we should go to Costco. And she's like, no, no, go to Costco. That's the worst place to go in a zombie <laughs> apocalypse. And then they're like, well, we can only take one animal. Should we take the cat or the dog? And she's like, the dog, the cat's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I probably wouldn't be the one to pull that kind of prank on. It might get Western pretty fast. I know uh, on April Fool's, which was, I guess, yesterday, yeah. um, my son and his mom, after baseball practice, you know, yesterday was her day. Um, so she brought him to practice. And, uh, you know, I was walking him to her car and they decided they had like set this prank up they were going to pull on me um and so i was talking to her at her went at the, the passenger window and my son is next to me like on his phone and um and she says like hey go put your stuff in the back of the car and i kind of look look over at him and he didn't he didn't move like he's just on his phone and then like she says it a second time and then he just doesn't say anything he's just standing there and I'm like, okay, I'm starting to get irritated at this point. Like, she's had to say it twice now. And she says it like a third time. And he says something to the effect of like, shut up, mom. I'm doing this game or something. And like, before I could, they could stop me. I had already struck this child. <laughs> I already <laughs> backhanded this child in the <laughs> chest. And they were like, no, no, it's a prank. It's a prank. Like, bro, you're standing entirely too close for that kind of prank like don't man i my heart like i was like pounding i went from zero to a hundred i thought my son had just told his mom to shut up like for real and it's too late he was standing entirely too close it was too late he already got backhanded and they're like no it's a joke it's a prank it's april fools so i was like boy don't you just almost died right there he's almost lost <laughs> your life over april fools joke we'll do that that's terrible yeah, you gotta watch who you're, uh, who you're thinking. Yeah, man. Gosh, dang. It can be rough. Yeah, not, not let my children talk to people like that. Yeah, me neither. I, yeah. I, the only reason I'll I let... watch my kids is because I could beat them. Because I'm. I, I guess this was like some. They were. It was some 
something they had saw on TikTok. I don't know. I don't know TikTok, but they saw it where like they were getting dad dad's reactions to like the mom, the kids talking back to the mom or whatever. And it's a horrible uh, idea. Was like, I know. And so I was like, if you're gonna do it, like you should be not within arm's reach of me. <laughs> like that was that should have been like pre planned. And I guess he had told his mom, like, mom, I don't know if this is a good idea. Like, are you gonna defend me? She's like, no, I'll, I'll, I'll defend you. And but he he didn't plan the whole like you know reach thing very well um because yeah he he caught these hands pretty quick so that is funny yeah yeah jokes on them no no for real well for my shout outs i just want to thank you for spending a couple hours of your tuesday night with us here on the show talking about all your good things you got going on and i think with that it's going to be a wrap for episode 438 yeah Um, I shared a uh, I shared a post earlier about like you know you decided to do an episode of podcast with your friend and it, you know and it shows like the guys getting walked out by the FBI and I'm like man I'm probably gonna go to jail after this I talked about child abuse and he asked me about some questionable things with my drone like <laughs> whatever <laughs> no arrests I'll, for this. I'd, I'd I'd be a shot caller in prison so it'd be it'd be good it's not that kind of podcast so <laughs> yeah. All right, and we'll see everybody next week.